Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 43 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the potential impact of perforation in a patient with previous coronary bypass graft surgery. The patient had previous coronary bypass and presented with refractory angina. He was referred for PCI of the right coronary artery CTO. The right coronary is occluded in the mid-segment. On dual injection, there is faint feeling of the distal right coronary, posterior lateral and right posterior descending artery. Retrograde attempts were unsuccessful. There was a small septal hematoma. Therefore, undergrade crossing attempts were undertaken. The wire quickly went subintimal and um, prolonged um, attempts led to crossing into the posterior lateral branch, but the wire was subintimal. So it was redirected with a knuckle to the posterior descending artery. We can tell that uh, the vessel is very, very small. The wire went in a branch of the posterior descending artery. And then we used the twin pass catheter to redirect uh, another wire into the posterior descending artery. We then uh, were able to advance a stingray close to the PDA, which is a very small diffusely diseased vessel. And then by doing the dual blind stick and swap technique, we're sticking up as well as um, down between the two stingray markers. We were able to advance a pilot 200 into the posterior descending artery. After the lesion was predilated, there was that area of contrast extravasation into that branch that the wire had originally gone into. The stain appears stable, so we elected initially to let it go, especially since there is a, conce a concept that perforation in previous bypass patients is less likely to need to tamponade because of the adhesions uh, prevent the formation of free pericardial effusion. However, after stents were placed, we still have the stain, and actually, if anything, it has increased in size. And at that point, we decided to, to treat it. We did uh, a transthoracic echocardiogram that did not demonstrate uh, much. There was good uh, ventricular function, could not see, of course, any free-flowing pericardial effusion. The pressure was stable. The patient had a normal heart rate. However, a few minutes later, suddenly the patient developed um, acute ST segment elevation and he started having pulsus paradoxus, which was very concerning for tamponade. We did an injection of the left main to ascertain that we didn't have any injury in the donor vessel. However, the left main was unchanged from before. Picture from the right demonstrated that there was now free flow into a space where the perforation had occurred. So we used the block and deliver technique we used the balloon more proximal to stop the flow in the distal RCA and then advanced a microcatheter. This is a 0.018 prograde microcatheter into that perforated vessel. And then delivered coils. That was an azure 2 by 20 millimeters coil that um, did not uh, quite seal the perforation. Of course, one of the things to consider in uh, coiling is that the coils may take some time to achieve hemostasis, especially the azure coils have a hydrophilic polymer that uh, swells after a few minutes and helps uh, cover the perforation. Another small coil was um, delivered and that leads to further decrease in the in the flow. And there was another coil that was um, uh, delivered as well. Although that coil ended up backing out uh, more proximally in the posterior descending artery. So the perforation was sealed. At that point, we, uh, in, uh, we intubated the patient because he was having chest discomfort and did a transesophageal echocardiogram, which does show a loculated collection of blood on the lateral, uh, on the posterior, on the inferior lateral wall, which will be consistent with the space we were seeing on, um, uh, on angiography. However, the overall function was normal. There is no compression of the RV. There was no compression of the left atrium, which is something sometimes seen with perforation in previous bypass patients. There is once again the loculated um, hematoma. 
preventing expansion of the lateral wall. But the patient was hemodynamically stable, so we elected to observe him in the intensive care unit. Unfortunately, the patient, a few minutes later, while being transferred, he developed cardiac arrest and could not be resuscitated. So there are many lessons here. One lesson is that the perforation in previous bypass patients can be much worse than perforation in patients with intact pericardium because in the latter, one can do pericardiosynthesis and relieve any potential tamponade, but when loculated effusions happen, draining them can be very, very challenging. The mechanism was a dilemma. Why did the patient die since we had occluded the perforation side? But there was a previous case report of um, a dissecting subepicardial hematoma and avulsion of the vasculature. That was a case uh, with the saphenous vein graft perforation in which the patient subsequently died. And on autopsy, what was found is there was a hematoma and then that hematoma led to avulsion of the epicardial coronary arteries leading to a hemorrhagic infarct in that part of the myocardium. And although we cannot be 100% sure, this is a likely mechanism of the cause of death in our patient. So in summary, the perforation in a previous bypass patient is a very serious complication that can be lethal because it can lead to loculated pericardial effusion, potential avulsion of the microvasculature and the pericardial coronary arteries leading to intramyocardial hematoma. And that is why if a perforation occurs in such a patient, very prompt sealing is very important. Potentially, if we had done this coiling earlier on in the case, the patient might have a different outcome. Small vessel perforations can be treated with a block and deliver technique through a single eight French guide catheter. A balloon is inflated proximally to stop bleeding into the pericardium. And then a microcatheter is advanced into the perforated vessel through which coils are deployed. However, if the branch is very small that there is no uh, feasibility of advancing a microcatheter, another way to treat such a problem is by putting a cover stand across the ostium of the perforated vessel. Also, embolization requires some knowledge of the different coils available. In this particular case, we used the 0.018 Azure coils that required a large microcatheter, the prograde. However, it is uh, another option to have uh, 0.014 coils, such as the Axiom, that can be delivered through any standard CTO microcatheter like the Fine Cross Corsair Turnpike. Thank you.